Good morning on a beautiful sunny day here from the First Congregational Church Sanctuary. I'm here this morning with Reverend Denny Moon from South Church and Tyler Pollock, who was our running our technician today. This being COVID time, pandemic time, being nimble is clearly the name of the game. As of Thursday afternoon, we were still planning to have a live service in Cook Hall, everybody in their pajamas if they wished. So instead, I hope you're all home in your pajamas enjoying a cup of coffee, hot chocolate or whatever, and uh, participating with us. Uh, for those in Connecticut, we did get a white Christmas. Uh, we had wonderful Christmas Eve services outside at South Church and then in the sanctuary here uh, later on on Christmas Eve. And I'm hoping that your day yesterday, Christmas Day, was filled with wonder, with family and love abounding. Stay tuned for next week. Uh, at the moment, we will be having a service here. This is our annual Star Sunday service. Uh, and we'll, the councils and the deacons from both congregations will be discussing that this week and deciding whether we do that again as we're doing it this week, uh, virtual only, or whether uh, we'll be able to do some physically distanced, masked uh, worship here in the sanctuary at First Church. So stay tuned, watch your emails and, and notices, Facebook notices and so forth. We are an open and affirming church, both we and South Church. Uh, we do welcome you no matter who you are or where you are in your life journey, whether you're at home or whether you're here with us when we are able to join together. So let us continue our worship. morning to you and Merry Christmas to you. As we come into our time of prayer, I would uh, alert you to the fact that there are a few moments of silence in the prayers, and uh, those are times that are opportunities for you to lift up uh, requests from your own hearts. Let us come to God in prayer. God of star and stable, you lead us to wonder and to hope. You gather us to hear your promise of love. And as we gather, we offer our concerns, our dreams, our hopes, and our fears.
Like the shepherds who sought the stable, we seek your promise of peace. We pray for your people's lives broken by violence, those who live with fear, and those who live without hope. We remember those in danger in Afghanistan, and we pray for your courage and peace for them. We pray for the victims of school shootings, recent and past. Like the wise ones who dedicated their gifts, we remember those in need, those without a home and those who are still recovering from the devastation by tornadoes in the past month. We pray for those who are lonely, those who don't know where their next meal is coming from, those whom are forgotten. For those who are ill in body and in spirit, for those who are confused or afraid, we pray for your joy and love for all of your people, especially those we remember now, for Carol Avancian, Tad Chamberlain, and others who have been diagnosed with cancer or any other life-threatening illness. Holy One, you came through a child offering renewal of spirit and of living. We give thanks for others through whom our spirits have been renewed as well, especially this day, Reverend Desmond Tutu, who died yesterday, whose life work has brought freedom and hope to South Africans and to all peoples around the globe who are oppressed. May our prayers be a new beginning for healing, truth, and trust, May we embody your love that is forgiving, compassionate, and gracious. May we embody your justice, being conspirators for equality with those who have been left out of the fruits of our nation's bounty. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who became the Christ, who taught us to pray when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Isn't technology wonderful? We get to share those moments no matter where we are. This morning's scripture reading comes from Matthew, and I'll be reading from verses 1 and 2, and then verses 9 through 12. Well, excuse me, 9. <laughs> Let me get myself straight here. Yes, 9 through 12. So from Matthew 2. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterward, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the baby born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star when it came up in the east and we have come to worship him. They were sent to Bethlehem and so they left and on their way they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were. What joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshiped him. They brought out their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and presented them to him. So ends our reading. Thank you, Bob. And thank you, Tyler, for coming out here on the day after Christmas. It's good to be with you both and to be with you folks who are uh, joining us virtually as well. I have a story to tell you today. When I was eight years old and my brother Dan was seven, our parents had moved to Chicago so that our dad could attend seminary. It was a whole new life for us, having left family and friends back in Minnesota for a much more noisy and crowded life in Chicago. The only family that we had near, uh, nearby were uh, Aunt Blanche and Uncle Ivo, who lived in Skokie in what was then a swanky suburb outside of Chicago. Uncle Ivo was our dad's uncle, our great uncle, our grandfather's twin brother. My grandpa's name was Ivan Del Moon, and his twin brother was Ivo Dale Moon. And my dad was named Louis Ivo Dale Moon. I'm glad they didn't hand the name down another generation. My uncle Ivo was the building manager of a large company with a lot of people working for him. And my aunt Blanche was a buyer of fashion clothing for a large store in downtown Chicago. She wore fancy clothes. She always wore lipstick, which left a red strip around the end of the cigarettes that she smoked. Uncle Ivo smoked a pipe or a cigar, and they both drank drinks with alcohol in them, with ice cubes in the glasses that made a little bell-like tinkling sound when it hit the sides of the glass. My brother Dan called them tinkle drinks. Aunt Blanche and Uncle Ivo may seem like normal people to you, but, but nobody else in our family smoked tobacco or drank alcohol. And plus, they used bad words that we never heard our parents or our parents' friends use. I mean, our dad was going to seminary in a denomination that abstained from tobacco and alcohol and evidently from bad words as well. So, my brother and I were always a bit anxious when we went to visit Aunt Blanche and Uncle Ivo because we didn't know quite what to make of them. I mean, they must be good people, right? Because our parents loved them. But at the same time, they seemed like bad people. Going to Aunt Blanche's and Uncle Ivo's was like a test for us kids. It wasn't just because we had to sit around and be quiet and listen to the adults talk about stuff that was really boring. It was that Everything was always perfect in their house. And we had to dress nice and be on our best behavior. 
They had valuable lamps and vases that we might break. No roughhousing, you two, our mom would say in the car on the way out there. And don't you dare spill anything at the dinner table. Aunt Blanche might have a hissy, whatever a hissy was. I said, Mom, sometimes kids accidentally trip and knock things over, and sometimes they spill things. Well, Mom replied, Blanche and Ivo have never had any children, so they don't know how kids are, and they don't have a kid-proof house, so be on your best behavior. We had that same speech again on the way out to their house on Christmas Eve that year. Dad drove the car around a few of the Skokie neighborhoods first so we could see the fancy houses that had Christmas lights on their roofs and in their yards. Our eyes were open wide, looking from one amazing side of the street to the other. There was reindeer pulling Santa's sleigh on someone's front lawn, and there was reindeer pulling Santa's sleigh on someone's rooftop. We couldn't believe our eyes. And before we got to Uncle Ivo's, Mom said, remember to say thank you when they give you a Christmas present. Dan said, we got socks last year. Not just any socks, Mom said. They were beautiful, expensive socks from Marshall Fields. My dad said, they don't know what kids like, so they got you something practical. Everyone can use another pair of socks. Yeah, Dan whispered to me, we're going to get another pair of socks. Well, Uncle Ivo and Aunt Blanche met us at the door, and they welcomed us in. They gave us ginger ale while they drank their tinkle drinks. Aunt Blanche offered us a plate of crackers and cheese. Hors d'oeuvres, she asked. I had no idea what she meant. No, uh, but I'll have some crackers, I said. Thanks. Dan and I were great that night. We didn't roughhouse. We sat down at the meal and we listened to the adults' boring talk and we managed not to spill anything. Afterward, we went into their family room and there was the Christmas tree in front of their picture window. It wasn't real. It wasn't even green. The whole thing was silver with only red bulbs and red ornaments on it. I mean, it looked beautiful, but it didn't look like Christmas. You boys sit over there on the couch, Aunt Blanche said. We obeyed, our legs dangling off the floor. There were gifts under the tree. My mom and dad had brought gifts for Aunt Blanche and Uncle Ivo. And the adults opened their gifts first, ooing and eyeing and saying things like, oh, you shouldn't have it. Oh, it's way too much. And then all the gifts were gone. The swaddled cloth around the bottom of the tree was now empty. And Uncle Ivo said, Oh, no, there, there appears to be no gifts for you boys. I thought your Aunt Blanche bought you something. Aunt Blanche took the cigarette out of her mouth. Ivo, you know I told you that this year you were supposed to get the boys their Christmas gift. I thought... They are bad people. I mean, everybody knows that kids get gifts at Christmas. That's a rule. Baby Jesus got gifts from the wise men, and I don't think they had kids. Well, Uncle Ivo got up off his seat, and he walked over toward the tree. Wait, he said, pointing to the ground. What's that? I don't see anything, Dan said. There's a string down there, isn't there? Uncle Ivo said. My eyesight isn't so good. I looked down and I did see a, a string on the ground. Yeah, Uncle Ivo said, it's just, a, it's just a string. Oh, well, well, he said. I wonder what that string is there for. Years later, 
I realized that Uncle Ivo and Aunt Blanche had practiced this whole routine ahead of time. Her sitting us on the couch, them blaming each other for not getting us a gift, and the way that Uncle Ivo squatted at just the right place to grab the string and then in one continuous half circle motion pull the string back in such a way that from under the swaddled cloth behind the tree came a model train track upon which sat a full set of railroad cars complete with engine coal cars, passenger cars, and open freight cars, and a caboose to bring up the rear. And when Uncle Ivo was done swiveling, the train set was between him and us, and he was grinning ear to ear. Where did this come from? He said. It must have been Santa. Our mouths dropped open. We jumped up absolutely flabbergasted. Is, is that for us? Dan asked. Oh, yes, yes, it's for you, Uncle Ivo said. Open the freight car doors. And we leaned over and we opened the two freight car doors and inside of each one was a pair of socks. Fancy socks, Dan exclaimed. Merry Christmas, Aunt Blanche said. Our mom gave us that look. You know it. Boys, what do you say? Oh, thank you, thank you, Dan and I said together. And spontaneously, we ran and gave them each a hug, and the smell of alcohol and tobacco didn't bother us a bit. Christmas brings disparate peoples together. When the angels sing peace on earth, they are pointing to a reality that acknowledges that people are different in many, many ways. And yet, people can reach an understanding with one another. People can live together in peace. The Magi, the astrologers from afar, they were foreigners, Gentiles, who did not belong in the Jewish faith. And yet, the birth of Jesus, as the story in Matthew tells us, brought these wealthy priests of another religion to a poor peasant girl and her fiancé to celebrate the birth of their child. Luke, on the other hand, has angels send poor shepherds who come to celebrate this same birth. These differences between human beings melt away at the revelation that God, who is love, is among us. All human divisions, religion, race, nationality, gender and transgender, sexual orientation, wealth and class, they, they all disappear at the story of God as a vulnerable human being, a baby. The division between the sacred and the profane, the religious and the secular, the, the sinner and the saint, and the good and the bad. And the smokers and drinkers and the abstainers. Those are all meaningless divisions. As was the division between Aunt Blanche and Uncle Ivo and my brother Dan and me. They reached out beyond their childless station and found in their hearts what kids want and what kids need. To reach out to one another beyond our boundaries, regardless of our differences, this is the pathway to peace. This is the message of Christmas. For through the baby born in the manger, God has reached out to us. Amen.
chosen that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept the watching, Our benediction doesn't start with go tell it on the mountain, but it tells us to go forth into the world and serve God with gladness. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing through the power of the Holy Spirit. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And all of God's people said, Amen. <laughs>